Hello and welcome to workshop 5.4 CFD and FEA 2D clinical combustion chamber and cis meshing. Um, so uh, we'll move directly into this. Uh, so the objective is to generate a 2D mesh, uh, 2D inflation, generate mapped meshes and parametrizing the mesh control. We may move on to the parametrization or uh, depending on the uh, software package that you have, uh, the parametrization we may leave towards the assessment. Um, as it becomes much more important and influential. So the first thing that we need to do is drag and drop a mesh component, um, mesh component, and what we're going to do is we're going to import in a geometry, and it's going to be the conical surface IGS file. So again, here, import geometry, browse, um, and it's the conical surface IGS open, and again here before we go into the meshing, it's best to just right click, edit, design, modeler, generate in here, and then go into the meshing uh, because it is a, a different file format. So just press generate, we have that here, file, close design modeler, and then double click on the mesh. So first things first, make sure our units are in millimeters, which is by default here, which is specified, that's very good. Um, and because this is axis symmetric um, modeling, we're going to be using some uh, hex meshing and face meshing. So the first thing that we want to do is open up the mesh uh, tree. Um, and in here, we want to change that from mechanical to CFD, which will then make sure the solver preference is fluent, it's linear. Um, what we also want to do is open up the sizing make sure that's no. We want to capture the curvature, um, but there's no capture on proximity um, for the moment. So what we want to do is change the element size to 1.1 millimeters. So here, put 1.1, and press enter. And we want to make sure that we've got the name selection sorted first. So here, edge selection, select this edge, N, inlet, and then select this one, N, outlet and we have both names uh, selected um, so when we apply the inflation uh, we can, we can um, use the pro controls so just generate the mesh quickly and you'll be able to see that this is what the mesh looks like uh, which is you know using a hex is using the automatic uh, but the method is not really precise so what we want to do is that some of these have triangular meshes, like for example here, uh, we can see there's a few elements that are using triangular elements. Um, what we want to do is most majority of it, we want to use um, a hex mesh. So what we want to do is we want to add inflation. So um, here from the mesh men, uh, select insert inflation from the context menu. So insert um, inflation. And what we want to do is select our face, press apply, okay, and activate the boundary box and select the 10 edges um, around our model. So around all of these, there's actually 10 edges. So uh, select here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And as you can see, I've ignored the inlet and the outlet uh, because they are not important uh, for here. So once we've got that, we should have 12 edges, um, sorry, uh, one face and our inflation edges uh, selected. Um, and what we want to do is smooth transition, two layers, that's absolutely fine. Um, and then what we want to do is add a method um, and to select the body. So mesh insert method, select our body, press apply. Um, and what we want to do here is we want to use a triangles only. So triangles only. And then here, if we then just generate our mesh, we should be able to see the inflation as well as the mesh. Um, so let's just turn this to the wireframe. Why is this? Um, okay. So if we zoom in, we'll be able to see that there's inflation happening here. Um, and there is a triangular mesh all the way within our system uh, that we have. Um, if we're going to display color, 
leave that out um, and it's a bit more better. So the next thing what we want to do is um, we want to change it into an all quad um, approach. So um, what we want to do is suppress the inflation, um, suppress this. We go to the all triangle methods um, and change this one to multi-zone quad try. Um, make sure that the surface mesh is uniform. We also want to make sure that it's all quad. And then the value element size is two millimeters. Um, and then once we've done that, we can then generate the mesh. And now what you'll see is that everything is a, um, a, a quad mesh um, rather than anything else. So here, now that we have this, um, what we can do now is suppress the multi-zone, um, suppress this. And this time what we're going to do is we're going to add face meshing. Um, so mesh, insert, face meshing, select our body, press apply. Um, and what that will do now is it will just make sure that this whole face is meshed uh, appropriately using quad uh, mesh. So in set the mapped mesh to yes. So mapped mesh, yes. Um, we want it to be quadrilateral and specify the corners. So here we've got two corners here and here. Press apply. Uh, generate the mesh. And what that does is, um, as you can see here, it focuses all of the mesh into a hex mesh, um, but also focusing that these ones are two corners as well. So the this allows um, a lot more structure to the mesh, specifically when it comes into 2D, um, and you can um, build grids very, very appropriately. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to do some add edge sizing. Um, so edge sizing, um, select the edges. Um, and these two edges, we're going to select first. Right click, insert sizing. And the sizing we're going to hear is we're going to use number of divisions. So change the element size to number of divisions and put a value of 10. And here you can start seeing this is where we start becoming and adding uh, parametrization. Uh, so make that as hard. So here, P, and that allows us to become a parametric function. Um, and this will be done, used later on in the parameter setup. So what we're going to do next is we're going to apply edge sizing to these two edges here. So this one here, this one here, right click, insert sizing. Um, this is going to be number of divisions, 20. And we can put P next to that one. And again, this one's going to be hard. And what we want to do now is make sure we go and apply this to the bottom two because these two here are equally the same. So this one here, this one here, and right click, insert sizing, um, two edges, element size, number of divisions here is going to be 35, and put a P next to that one. And again, here it needs to be hard. So the next sizing here is going to be this edge here. So right click insert sizing and the element size here is number of divisions is going to be 20 and make sure that's p but here we also want the behavior to be hard as well uh, no bias for this and then we've got these two edges that are similar um, insert sizing um, and again two edges divisions is going to be 15 make sure we put a p next to that one and also again this behavior is hard as well the final one, um, again, we might need to use the direction tool here so just to keep uh, an eye on things, which way the directions are going. So select these two edges, right click, insert um, sizing on these ones. So because we want to put a bias feature on these. And the bias feature here is going to be two edges. Divisions is 60. Um, put a P next to that one to become parametric. The behavior is hard. The bias feature we're going to do is this one here. And bias feature is factor is 5. Now you can see this one's going in the right direction, but this one's not. So we select this one here only and change that one so it goes um, into a larger uh, bias factor. So what we can do now, um, generate the final mesh. So 
just press um, home, generate mesh, and you can see that it's a lot more defined and controlled because of all the behaviors um, and applications that we put in uh, within the uh, model. So we can go to the mesh quality, um, quality here, and we can again look at the um, orthogonal quality just to see what's happening here. And you can see that you know this is um, very similar to what we've obtained in the workshop. So preparation for a fully mapped mesh, if we want to refine the mesh, we will need to change all the edge size and details. Um, but however, what we can do is we can use the parametrization um, tool here to generate the actual model itself. So switching to the work page, uh, workbench uh, model page, we can see that there's a parameter set here. So if we double click on the parameter set, you will see that we have all our P1s to P6 with a number of divisions, and we have all our values. So for example, um, on the all parameters, double click on the box below edge sizing six. Um, so which says here, um, edge sizing six, double click on this. And in here, we're gonna put in mesh factor. And the expression we're gonna put is value of one and then press enter. Now, once that's done, uh, we have um, a function that we can use. Um, and what that will do is it's the sizing, edge size parameters select. So um, here where it's got the properties of the outline, um, properties of the outline here, we can put in an expression. Um, so once we click on P1 here, um, you can see that the property of the outline of A4 P1 becomes available on the bottom box here. Um, and what we want to do is we want to put a new expression. So, so in here, if we type in 10 times, And here we type in P7. And press enter. Oop. Sorry, it's capital P7. OK. So and basically what we created is a P7 mesh factor. So to this converts the parameter p2 to a function of the original number of the divisions and a new parameter we created in p7 uh, mesh factor. So what we want to do is do the same for the remaining edges um, and parameter using the following expressions provided. So what we'll do is we'll do it exactly the same. Um, so double click on p2. Twenty times P7, enter, thirty five times P7, enter, twenty times P7, enter, and then here it's 15 times P7, enter, and then here it's 60 times P7, enter. So in the table of the design points, you can now change the mesh factor parameter M7 to drive all eight edge sizing parameters. So for example, here, if I change this one to two, press enter, it doubles everything. And what that does is, at the same time, it will change um, the mesh on this end as well. So what you have to do is um, go back to the workbench and you put update all design points, click on that, output, yep. And that would change our model. Um, so you might need to close this, sorry. 
close this one here, update all design points. Um, okay, so what it's asking us to do is click on this, uh, properties, properties, update parameters, update for project, go back to parameters, um, update all design points. So what that's doing now is it's basically opening up the ANSYS meshing um, and generating the new mesh ready for um, our model. So once this is done, we can then uh, go back to um, the ANSYS meshing, double click on this, and we can then have a look at our new model. So double click on the mesh, give it a few seconds, and you will see now uh, by turning on the mesh, it's a lot more finer because everything has been doubled up. Okay, right, thank you for watching. Um, we can now move on to the next workshop, which is ANSYS Fluent Solver.